Please bless us with a bright... I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our ch <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fun King! Vashe! What's wrong? Vashe! Vashe! No, Paima didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's custom- ah! <gasps> Lynette! Mm, Lenny asked me to wait here for you. Uh, right. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. Huh? Hey, you're not trying to scare Pine. Hmm, I see. I might be able to- In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hype. It's because of her sensitivity to the hydro element? But what when do you cry, Paimon? Wait, what? Just answer me. When do you cry? Uh, when Paimon's really sad? Oh, and when Paimon's super- Then you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the- So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's t So, what did the voice say? Huh. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to- Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't let that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before- Oh, right! That- I really want to go traveling. I don't mind where we go, as long as I have my friends with me. <laughs> oh. Love Spina di Rosula's logo. It was designed by my mother. Have you noticed how it's shaped like a heart? No two cases. Ah, Traveler and Paimon. Good to see you. I knew- Are you kidding? We wouldn't miss it for the world! We thought we could- 
I can tell, judging by how early you've arrived. But you're actually right on time. The audience still hasn't started entering the venue yet, which means... The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already... Ooh, front row seat! Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Hey, Lenny! Could you come over here and take a look at the... Oh, I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cal, my assistant, calling me. I'll go... Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Lenny. Traveler, maybe we should strike up a conversation with the- Ah, oh, you little- Excuse me, I did not realize you felt awkward. I am terribly sorry. I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like. Oh, uh, so you heard all of that, did ya? Uh, <laughs> boy, you sure have- Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon's- Sorry, um, Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking- Uh, oh! Paimon's got it. You're a friend, you say? Well, if Mr. Linny would like to be my friend, I would be. Oh, so you're not friends with Linny then? Oh, this is getting more awkward by the second. <laughs> nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Vaudain. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across Tavat. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. Oh, Monsieur Nervillet. What an honor it is to have you here to see my show. Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in... Per oh, wait. No. Hmm? I saw you all chatting just now. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty. For being so rude just now. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their you And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I there's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. Otherwise she may become flustered. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's Farina, the Hydro Archon. <laughs> she sure has a smug and satisfied look. Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. Huh? So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. The show is finally about to start! <laughs> Boy, Ooh, they're dimming the lights! The show must be starting! Hmm. Uh, sorry. Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a... 
Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's... Whatever. Now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elements... So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental... Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way... Oh, good point. That's what makes... Now, without further ado, let the show begin. I know you might miss her, but don't worry. She'll be coming right back on stage momentarily. Oh, and before I forget, you never know what can happen in the... A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. what you came for. These little tricks? You've seen them all before. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Using this water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely. Right before your very eyes. <sighs> it's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage, so let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. Are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi. Uh, I'm back. Uh-huh. If we could see easily through his tricks, then that would mean to appreciate magic. You should focus on the show happening on stage, rather. Ah, that's right. Thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> but our magical journey has only just the magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank would- In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary- So, for my next trick, I will require the part- Please, if my assistants could bring out the- There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have- Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge. Now, please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow, how's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks, or does Lenny have actual superpowers? The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. 
It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, let me see. Oh, row seven, seat three. Congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand for an entire minute. Please, come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. I'm sorry, it might be a little cramped inside, but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. You don't need to do anything, but no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up. You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Before I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh! Paimon kinda wants to count faster after hearing him say that! <laughs> no, no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. Come on, repeat after me. 60, 59, 58. 60, 59, 58! That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. Oh, all right. You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. 40, 39, 38! Mr. Linny, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double-checking the direction of the magic. It would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong places. For example, mid-air right above the audience. Even though he's saying that, Lenny doesn't seem nervous at all. Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. 25! 24! 23! What's wrong, Mr. Linny? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black in here. I can't tell left from right. N never mind the decorations! There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17! Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. Ten seconds and change is still plenty of time. Ten! Almost there now. Eight. Whew! Swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait! Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Hey, slow down! Six, Honestly! Five! Four! Three! Uh, 
Oops! That doesn't count! Zero! Magic to fix the stage now, right? What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. <laughs> yes, th that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... Then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance. And there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. Uh, the... the serial disappearances case? <gasps> That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! <laughs> I know... I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. Really, using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale... Did he really underestimate us that badly? I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linny, is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case. Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident. No. This all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of you. Now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right. How can Lenny do this? He was in the box on the stage the entire time. We can't besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearance. Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, May I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linney and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Huh? I just think that he... Well, I, uh, think it might be a little early to talk about formally pressing charges. But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course.
there's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I all, but with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. <laughs> but draw, so no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And what? Huh? It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost. I understand. Charges have now been pressed, and as such, well, Traveler. Seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside, for are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him? Very well. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build. Linney and his troop are all potential suspects and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm Linny! Sorry about everything that happened just now. Of course! Who wouldn't be scared after with Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, good to hear. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But, if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries. So I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not. And I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If some, even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off and just- Which is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. Paimon bought them when we were reading at the bookshop in the city or- Don't worry, Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't- I think they look cute on you, Paimon. You have good taste, Lynette! <laughs> <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now, but with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, just leave it to us. Oh, uh, since we're going to start investigating, I Oh, well, I'm afraid that would involve- The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Linny. I suppose you're right. The truth behind- <sighs> Tis truly a pity. As a magician, but if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the... We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our... Alright! Let's go have a look while the investigation team's... Hello, officer! How's the investigation going? Ah, uh, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina meant... Huh? What do you... Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants, named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, the assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting... As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box. This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were un... However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely- But he doesn't have a motive! Are you both good friends? Uh, well, you can't say we're- So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even conv- I know there's no such thing as magic. The real- I've seen a lot of cases. And I can tell you that pe- Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourself.
So this is the rope that broke and cut. Hmm. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? Whoa. Look! This bit is made for... Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something... Wait! Why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer... Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Linny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. You're trying to help them? Linny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further... It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat. Regard in other words, Linny knew who would be hmm. That much checks out. Let's just see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Hmm. Even though it This location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are... The seats were all booked in advance. So we were... Sure. It's not like this is confidential information. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House. But she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her. We have looked into her social connections. It seems, simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all. Which match... Hmm. Were the victims... That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women. <sighs> okay, then. I don't need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, it is of utmost importance that we get to the... I see that you're investigating the area. Well, if you find any new and interesting leads... We don't have too many thoughts. <laughs> 
Then why don't I tell you my hi- The thud? Oh! Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. Hmm. That I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jump. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope. But wasn't the noise... Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Oh, that's true. Hmm. That does remind... Linny's still talking to the guards. I think someone will be...
You. Yes, both of you. Over here. I've been keeping an eye on you for a while now. Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it. Spina di Rosula and I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus, Demoiselle's ve- Huh? Boss? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Melus and the others are still used to my... Previous title. My apologies, demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will in- No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're- <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a- Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too, but how did you come- Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever. But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from- Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that- Sounds more like- Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times. All right, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer- Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't- In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an- Um, well? And why would that be? <laughs> See? Most astute of you, demoiselle. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the op- And if that can be done, Bob. Or... All right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, now, I need to make some preparations, following which- Wait! Since when did we be- Hmm? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion. Hmm. That's more like it. Far be it from me to brag, but- I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in un- You wish to save a friend from false accusation. Hmm. You have a point. <laughs> and what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your- I have nothing to add. Oh. Uh, we'll be making some preparations first. No one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. Uh, no! We're not leaving! We're rep Were you always guarding this entry? Yes! After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. I doubt there was much opportunity. How can you be so- Well, because I was in charge, I couldn't see Linny's performance from here. Which was quite a shame, but still. I did not abandon my post, and I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even a- We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl co- Alright, thank you for your help. This'll be useful- We've checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm, Paimon wonders how Linny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? We're about to see how magic is made. Understood. Then I will be going... Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. 
I fear may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and we'll be helping investigate, and these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to... <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box. Prepared... But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you- Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might- The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw the two magic boxes are positioned right up. See this flatbed truck? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box... I see. So that's the purpose of the box... Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she... Right! You were talking that whole... Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynn. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already... And what about Lynette? I was in the mezzanine space in the back... Oh, it... That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And, by the way, I was... I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can tell who's... And that's my favorite part of this trick. So that's how it all worked! Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in. And then I walk out of the other box in the... But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out... And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I, I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime. So Linny and Lynette are not permitted to... Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. Thanks, everyone. This looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. Whatever it is. Uh, 
the floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why? Oh, hi, my nose. It's one of those tricks where you... And here's a broken vase. Uh, that can't be... the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing. Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Right. And do you really need... Ugh. This is so confusing. It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them... But there are no other ways in or out of here. Oh, you're right! Let Paima write that down. Seems we're just about done investigating down here. Yes. Let's head back up. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Apologies for the wait, dumb. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the, the guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber that- Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearing. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. In other words, the charges are very light. Charges? And then try- That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. That's right. This is how Indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness tech. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will. This also precludes any kind of favor. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final. Then, finally, the oratrice will be consulted. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same. Ah! Yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place. Huh? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us... <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to dis... And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case... I'm ready to break out at any time. Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of op- In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after- Just kidding! Just kidding! Paimon will still- Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll- Huh? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Yes, I must be prepared to meet the Demoiselle's Bee. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my... These three are quite the interesting group. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. I... Uh, Paimon was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting... <laughs> oh, 
Well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency. Or anyway, give these a try. Fresh out of the oven. There's only three? Well... Eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush. Tea is ready to be served as well. No need for concern, I... All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As pup, however, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not... A the magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right? The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some alter resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her cloak. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the... Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real... Tr <sighs> True. None of the... But the only people left to consider are... Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic pot? Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the set, nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has... <sighs> Were we... From the sound of things, this is turning into a... Your macarons are amazing, though, Navia. They smell... <laughs> they are my specialty, after... What? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few let... <sighs> no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but besides, Prima knows that if she ate too many, then... Wait... Even you don't believe Paimon? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then... <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten the loose. Set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't... As you wish, there was... And I have the egg sugar. Uh, well... That's it for snack time. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think it would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on... All right, thanks for your help. It, oh, <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malouse, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. It's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, it's probably going to be a... Relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. Thanks, Navia. Well, best of luck to you. Ah, oh, finally, you're back. Well, how did you... To be honest? No, no, we're already very- Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't that was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never- But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you- Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic should- Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. 
Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? My, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box, and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales. Could those mean... <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? The House of the Hearth? No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent, after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Oh, good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. <laughs> hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Order! Order! Mr. Linny, allow me to reestablish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that
that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Granted. In that case, what is your request? Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick, with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That boy seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. 
On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground. But the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're gonna need a seriously watertight defense. Huh? She gets what you mean? I really want to go traveling. I don't mind where we go, as long as I have my friends with me. Both parties have returned to their positions. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may...
continue stating Ugh, that took l at this stage let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective Down began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the office. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too, but afterward. Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice. And there you have it. That's... Does the defendant's side have any objections to... The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events. This won't produce a per According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He could... to the room that contains the oratrice's core. Hmm. Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Of mine. Oh, well, 
Your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what... <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time... <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't. That's right! Lenny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel. This means that when the crime happened, the same clue you used to disprove his... <laughs> well played. <laughs> To think you'd use such logic. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? is the missing person and an ordinary audience member the deceased's name is cowl lenny's assistant could there have been a third person involved the deceased's name is cowl next is recreate the truth what cowell did and how he went from would-be perpetrator to no one entered or left the opera house through its entrances so the deceased's name is cowell lenny's assistant Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. So, there might. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between. Lenny was not in the tunnel at that. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would. Lenny was not in the tunnel at that. name is Cow. The deceased's name is Cow. Lenny was not in the tunnel. It would have been tough for both people. The sound we heard may have... No one entered or left. No one entered or left. The deceased's name is Cowell. It would have been tough for both people. The sound we heard may have. Halsey's clothing was a. No one entered or left. What's wrong, 
Traveler? Are you still having trouble figuring things out? <laughs> I see. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not? Just like the trick as it transpired, if only we knew how whole... Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has... But it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live per... <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents, but do you... If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Lenny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal an The sound we heard may have come from- The deceased's name is Cow- The vase was not broken- disappeared instead of being killed. Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually. If there's a similar method where a person could be trans... <laughs> oh, just how could a person ever be transformed into water? This is real. <sighs> Must we really? Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. Even so, the truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt... <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion... Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that it... Guards, please step into the... We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be sh We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's- The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... The primordial sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal- The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epiclet. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact... You've got to be kidding! People just... That's something so ridiculous, actually... Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but... Huh. If people can become water... Does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowl... Wait just a minute... Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal events has yielded some surprise... Still... Let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has guards. Please continue exact- Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence. So of course. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case- Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't- mm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that- The rope that strung the water tank up was lit. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick. The water from the primordial sea should already have been... Lynette was in the magic box on... The deceased's name is Cow. I remember there was something else within. Cowell 
Grove would tamper with the water. When the magic box containing Halsey would lower, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial seed inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowl would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh, that does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. <sighs> oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <sighs> what a humiliation. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, Allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice, Cowl, then... But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away... Ultimately, he knocked Cowl out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became... Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclu... Am I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here.
Is this the end of the road? We've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale! Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move... Huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick, one that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linney, if you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. And voila! Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So, the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me, and then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. What? what Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there, and I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Linny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey! No wonder you look familiar! So you were the thief! Linny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled! Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. 
So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well... That makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillian's perspective.
Hmm. Hmm. The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lily Ann's attempt to break out when she was frightened. was not broken to cover anything up, but was smashed during the struggle between... Lily Ann was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what what... Selected out of the blue, Lillian panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillianne was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillianne back in. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillianne came out on top, knocking Cowl out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk. She knew that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So... She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Talk about a sneak- At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now- Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I- uh, <laughs> Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have- <sighs> What? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that! She's if there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be... To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine, and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, 
and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box. And thus, be Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house. From this reconstruction of events, we can- <laughs> While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separate, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not. <laughs> Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the primordial sea in Linny's baggage? Uh, right! Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know! Or was. I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny. But you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just thought We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity... And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed. Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protect- Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the- <laughs> Huh. What? And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Just going back now? That's true. Traveler, Paimon, please wait. Winnie. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe, but still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. E I guess. But I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with the... That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then to... The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering... Would back when our parents first died, Lynette and I, to survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to- I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner. And we be- To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular. And we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would- Before long, an aristocrat came to me, and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my per- So you went from orphans to nobility, just like- That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was- But- I gradually discovered that while we were called foster ch he would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better <laughs> It took- After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lin- I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. The answer he gave me was- She caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform. Oh no. So, huh. But what in Fontaine's lot? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care. 
and they have their ways of escaping. I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood and the knave standing there in the... So, she'd already taken care... That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm and had even discovered several girls hidden in a father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, but she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the... She has her own she has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the gnosis's power when she obtains it she plans to use it to find a way to so she believes in that's right the whole house of the hearth is currently work today's case has also proven that people from fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort everyone at hotel booth de Té, including the knave has their roots in fought to us orphans the only connection we have left to this world apart from our family so from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like sealing a Gnosis, everything- It's alright, I understand. I just hope you can understand that even if you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my- Hey there! What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Navi? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the- Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? Besides! Are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's- And given that there's new evidence from the trial- Ah. I see. Well- I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But, sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth, and the reflection in the murk to be... Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as part- Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? Uh, well, i just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no re- Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your- You don't have to twist my arm's arm if Boss Navi is treating- Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right, then. Let's have our farewell meal!